Mr. Beck. Well, my client, if they begin deliberations, prefers that they not be released. Uh, and so our suggestion would be to recess and allow them to begin the deliberations on Wednesday morning. All right. And I would concur in Mr. Van Gelitz's assessment. Okay. Well, then I will explain what the path we're going to take is when I release them today. Uh, all right. <clears throat> you still have rebuttal? Yes, sir. Okay. So you're going to rest. I'm going to give you the opportunity to present evidence. Mm -hmm. You can rest. I think the court needs to inquire. Yeah, well, I was going to do that, but we wanted to make sure you wanted the opportunity to decide after all of the evidence. So I think we're at that point. So if you need a few minutes to talk to each of them, you can take that now. Are you ready to talk about it? You are, Judge. Uh, I had an opportunity to go over the pros and cons of testifying with Mr. Barrow. I explained to him that that decision to testify is solely his decision. All I could do is give him the good and the bad, but ultimately it was up to him to make that decision. My understanding is that he is elected not to testify. All right. Mr. Barrow, would you raise your right hand, please? Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Thank you. All right. Mr. Barrow, you heard what Mr. Gorley said. Have you had the opportunity to discuss with him the decision as to whether or not you testify in your trial? Yes, sir. Okay. And you understand that there are certain decisions that are the lawyers, and there are certain decisions that only you as the person charged with the offense can make. You understand that? One of those is whether you choose to exercise your right to testify or whether you choose to exercise your right to remain silent. Those are your rights. They're not Mr. Gorley's. So you've had the opportunity to talk to him about that, yes, sir. and he's given you his advice. Yes, sir. He's discussed with you the good things that could happen or the bad things that could happen. Have you made a decision yourself as to what you want to do? Yes, what is your decision? All right, sir. Thank you. Your Honor, on behalf of Mr. King, we've had the same discussions. Uh, the pros and cons of him testifying, whether I might feel it's necessary or not necessary, he has made the decision, and he's advised me that decision is not to testify. All right. Raise your right hand, Mr. King. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, sir. All right. Now, you've heard what Mr. Bankowitz just said. Yes, you understand the decision as to whether or not you testify is a decision that only you can make. Yes, sir. Have you discussed with Mr. Bankowitz the pros and the cons of taking the stand to testify? Have you made a decision yourself as to whether or not you want to testify? What is your decision? All right, sir. Thank you. All right. Ms. Hawthorne. Your Honor, I have reviewed my client's rights and the law with my client regarding his taking the stand and testifying. He has um, been thinking about it over the last couple of weeks because we've been discussing it with him. And he has indicated to me throughout the time that he does not wish to testify, and he has reaffirmed that today. All right. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, All right. Mr. Smith, uh, Ms. Hawthorne says she's been talking. You can put your hand down. You've been having this conversation with her for the last couple of weeks. Is that correct? Yes, okay. And Ms. Hawthorne has discussed with you the pros or the good things that might happen if you testified versus the bad things that might happen. Have you arrived at a decision yourself as to what you want to do? And your decision is you don't want to testify. You have to answer out loud so the record's clear. And that's your decision that you've made yourself. All right, sir. Thank you. All right, then what we will do, I will 
give Mr. Bankowitz an opportunity to call any additional witnesses. I will then call on Ms. Hawthorne, and then I'll ask the state if you have rebuttal, and then we'll get going. Yes. Uh, there's really no reason for me to send them out and then bring them back in to tell them they're going home. I could have the conversation with them now at that point after rebuttal. Okay. Uh, I just need to visit a spot to review the previous motions. Okay. Uh, you can consider them renewed. I'm comfortable letting you do that now and preserving it. All right. We would renew all previous motions for mistrial, including judgment of acquittal, Judge. Um, I don't anticipate calling any witnesses after he's done with his rebuttal witness, but if he does... Change. All right. I understand. Same on behalf of Mr. Judge. All right. Same on behalf of Mr. Smith and Mr. Senator. I'm not sure what rebuttal testimony the state intends to offer. I'm not concerned who are you calling? I'm going to call Chris for a sec. To? He would testify that he spent, I believe it was about an hour and a half or so, interviewing Shigiri and Hamilton separately from Kiara Scott, and that Kiara Scott actually took Ms. Hamilton's place in the interview room at the conclusion of the interview, which would tend to rebut the testimony of Javon O'Collins that Shigiri and Hamilton was with him continually from the time that she arrived at the, he arrived at the sheriff's office, met her outside until the time they left together. All right. That answer your question? Yes. Sir. Okay. I don't hear anything in that that would constitute bolstering. No. So, all right. Okay. Then are they ready? All right. Let's return the juries. All right. Welcome back. Bunch was good. Very good. Mr. Bankowitz, any additional witnesses on behalf of Mr. King? No additional witnesses, sir. Ms. Hawthorne? Your Honor, at this time, the defense will remove into evidence defense A. Any objection? All right. Then, uh, okay. What I'd like, it should say, like, Smith that needs to have his name to differentiate it. It does. Okay. So, defense exhibit on behalf of Michael Smith, A for identification, will be received in evidence as defendant's exhibit number one. Defendant Smith's exhibit number one. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. State, any rebuttal? State will call Chris for a sec. Just for the record, we remove all motions. All right. That, that's noted for the record. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth shall be God? I do. Have a seat. Mr. McCord. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Can you introduce yourself to the jury and spell your name for the court? Hi, I'm Chris Vorsek, and my last name is spelled V as in Victor, O-R-I-S-E-K. Where do you work? Marion County Sheriff's Office. How long have you been there for? I've been there for 26 years. What is your current position with the Sheriff's Office? Currently, I am a supervisor in the Criminal Investigative Division there at the Sheriff's Office. What other positions have you worked while at the Sheriff's Office? Um, many positions from corrections, uh, patrol, investigations, uh, investigative supervisor, uh, evidence supervisor, forensic supervisor. So. Have you worked in the major crimes division at all? Yes. Back in September of 2015, what was your assignment? I was in charge of the evidence forensic unit at that time. And did you occasionally get called upon due to your investigative background? Yes, I did. 
I want to direct your attention to September 13th, 2015. Were you working that day? Uh, that, that day and, and that evening, yes. Did you, on the morning of September 13th, 2015, speak with somebody named Shigarian Hamilton at the Marion County Sheriff's Office? Yes, I did. Okay. Did you speak to her along with the, uh, Sergeant Keith Miller? Yes, I did. When you spoke to Ms. Hamilton, where did you speak to her? In the interview room there by cr the Criminal Investigation Division there at the Sheriff's Office Main Operation Building. Was she spoken to in that room alone, other than you and Keith Miller? Yes, alone. Mm -hmm. How long was she in that room for? Uh, she was in that room for a, a total of an hour and 43 minutes. And during that time, where was Kiera Scott? She was in a, in a separate waiting room. Kiera being a man. Yes, yeah, I'm sorry, he, yes. Um, at the time you concluded with Ms. Hamilton's interview, did Kiera Scott then go into that interview room? Yes. I have nothing further. Cross-examination. Do you know if she arrived before or after Bono Collins? I'm not sure who that is. Do you know if she left before or after? Bono Collins. No. Mr. Bankowitz. No question, Your Honor. No question. All right. Anything else? No, Your Honor. Is he excused? Yes, sir. All right. You can go about your business. Yes, sir. Thank you. Any other rebuttal? Yes, sir. All witnesses can be reduced. Any sir rebuttal? No, sir. All right. All right. Then. Ladies and gentlemen, we've reached the end of the evidence in the case, and I want to try to give you an idea of logistically where we're going at this point. Uh, I would expect closing arguments and instructions, the instructions phase of the trial, to take several hours. Uh, I tend not to limit the attorneys in terms of time on their closing arguments, so it's hard for me to predict because I don't limit them. Uh, I could limit them, but I choose not to. Uh, so I would fully expect that if we started first thing in the morning with closing arguments, that you're probably not going to be done listening to me read you the almost 80 pages of instructions until probably mid-afternoon tomorrow, conservatively. It could go faster. It might go slower. It just it's impossible for me to tell. One thing I do know is that once the juries begin to deliberate, then you're not allowed to separate, which would mean if I gave you the case at three o'clock tomorrow afternoon, then when you got tired, you'd go to a hotel, okay? You would be what the attorneys call sequestered. It's the same reason that you don't get to take your cell phones into the jury room once you begin to deliberate. At that point, you're not supposed to have conversation with anybody except the other jurors and only when all of the jurors are present. I don't want to do that. Uh, so what I expect is I'm about to release you for the day. The lawyers will remain here with me and we will go through those 80 pages of jury instructions to make sure there are no issues. Uh, we will be here for a while doing that. There's no reason for you to sit back there and wait while we do that. I'll have you back here first thing tomorrow morning uh, and we will begin closing arguments and then conclude the day with me reading you your instructions on the law wherever it is that falls during the day. At that point, I will excuse you for tomorrow, and my plan would be to have you come back first thing Wednesday morning, then to begin deliberation. And that way you'd have the full day. There shouldn't be any restriction now. If it goes past five o'clock, then it's gonna go past five o'clock. You will deliberate until you reach a verdict. So, everyone understand that? Okay, you you need to be on high alert about what you run into outside of the courthouse again, okay? That's particularly gonna be true when I let you go tomorrow. But today, <coughs> avoid the Star Banner, the Ocala.com website, television news, 
pretty much stay off the internet if at all possible. Uh, but I will release you for today, and I will see you first thing tomorrow morning. All right, the jury's out of the courtroom. All right, so I provided counsel uh, for Mr. Barrow and Mr. Smith each a set that I would propose delivering to the jury, your jury. Uh, Mr. King has an independent set that's got his name on it, doesn't have the other two defendants' names on it, doesn't have any of their instructions in it. Similarly, Mr. Barrow and Mr. King don't have any of Mr. King's instructions in their packet. But what I do propose to do is to read all of it to the jury together and then explain to them that the written material they're going to have will pertain to the defendants they're responsible for only. And I may tell them that before I start reading the instructions, that they are going to get a written copy and that the written copies will pertain to the cases that they are to decide. Uh, so I'm going to start with the combined set because I think we can, at least that's easier for me to go through. All right. All right, so 3.1, Introduction to Final Instructions, that's the two sentences that comprise that. Any objection? 3.2, Statement of the Charge, and what I would read to the jury is Laquan Ramel Barrow, a defendant in this case, has been accused of the crimes of second-degree murder and five counts of attempted second-degree murder. Michael Eugene Smith, a defendant in this case, has been accused of the crimes of second-degree murder and five counts of attempted second-degree murder. And then Gary Edward King, a defendant in this case, has been accused of the crimes of second-degree murder and four counts of attempted second-degree murder. Any objection? No. All right. Now, the... <clears throat> The introduction to homicide and attempted homicide is the way it's titled and what it appeared Mr. McCourt made a pretty good attempt to combine the two in a manner that makes sense. So take a moment and read through that. Uh, let me know if you have an objection. Okay. I think the state has the right to request them. We would request lessers, Your Honor. All right. Do you have any objections to the lessers that they've proposed? Not the proposed lessers, no, but he indicated that he didn't want any, so I wanted to bring that to the court. Understood. But the state does have a right to request lesser included. So. All right, any objection to what is 6.1 and 7.1? No, Your Honor. Not by Mr. Barrow. No, Okay. All right, and then next in Mr. McCourt's packet was the principal's instruction. Any objection to that? And then 7.4, murder in the second degree. I, I put Benitria Robinson's name at the top of it so that it's easy for the jurors to be able to isolate individual charges based on victims. Right, before we get to that instruction, we are going to be requesting the 3.6 to help the active instruction. I would concur. Also concur. Thank you. Thank you. Well, 
the question that comes to my mind is independent act of who? Judge, the state listed testimony from Terrell Shaw, and there were statements with my clients and I believe the other two co-defendants while they were in the club that we're going to get them when we get outside. And it's our position that we presented evidence from the case that there was going to be a fight outside, not a murder outside. And therefore, I believe we were entitled to that based on that testimony. Mr. Shaw never testified he was inside the club. He may have. Mr. McCord had him read that statement to the jury as part of the um, redirect, redirect. Mr. Shaw? Mr. Shaw. Had him read what? I'd ask Mr. I'd ask the detective if Mr. Shaw had made any statements about my client um, catch, made any statements catching a body or get a stick. The detective said no. Said no. And then I believe Mr. McCord continued with Mr. Shaw's testimony in regards to what was said, either from Mr. Shaw or from the detective. And the statements I'll pull it up here on. Yeah. Now, I believe Mr. Ford may be talking about Mr. Shaw's interview transcript, page six. Mr. Shaw states, the big guy is the most one who had the altercation because he's the one who had the most concern about getting back in the club and getting to whoever, whatever he needed to do. So he kept saying, I tell you when they come outside, we get to get them. When they come outside, we get to get them. When they come outside, when they come outside, we get to get them. That is accurate, Judge. And I remember Mr. Bankowitz asking the question of Mr. Shaw, did you ever go inside the club? Okay. So you want it to follow the principal's instruction? I do, Judge. To all of you? Yes, sir. Uh, there is one spot in the instruction where I'm supposed to fill in a defendant's name. Are you comfortable with just the defendant? And then it's kind of universally applied. The instruction has the word another person? Yeah, I've done that since I haven't heard a name of the independent actor. I believe we the have, defendant would be fine. We have allegations of shining light at a firearm that is passing to somebody. I'm not, yeah. The instruction says another or the name of an individual. I'm okay with another. I would ask for another judge. And the question I have is there's one spot in the standard where a, a defendant's name would ordinarily go, and I propose just to put the defendant, and then it would apply to all three across the board. Yes, sir. All right, so. All right, so 3.6, I guess that's an I or an L, independent act would then be page seven. Immediately after principles. Agreed? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You want a copy of it? I have a copy, Judge. Okay. You need to. Pardon? I have a copy, sir. I just did it over lunch. Okay. All right. And then to 7.4 murder in the second degree as to Venetria Robinson. Any objection? And this one is to Mr. Barrow. Okay. And then 6.4, attempted second degree murder. And again, I've put the alleged victim's name in the heading just so the jury, it's easier for them to identify. This one is to Nathaniel DeWeese Kendrick. Any objection? And then 6.4, attempted second degree murder as to Danielle Kendrick. 
uh, again as to Mr. Barrow. No objection. And then Davinus Blunt with regard to Mr. Barrow. Tomia, Miana, Ann Wadley is next. No objection. And then Dontarius Bartley attempted second degree murder as to Mr. Barrow. Okay. All right. And then if you read the email I sent you, this is where I thought there was confusion. Uh, it, in reviewing, I actually had to study the information. The information alleges both 775.0871, the enhancement of a felony by the use of a firearm, and 775.0872, which is the 1020 life statute. So rather than trying to marry the two instructions, I've included the instruction for 0871, which says that it, uh, it I don't know that it ever uses the word enhancement, but it does uh, identify the use. And I'm gonna make one change because what was alleged was I think personally carried or used, and I'm going to delete all the others. So it would read, if you find that Laquan Ramel Barrow committed second degree murder or attempted second degree murder, and you also find beyond a reasonable doubt that during the commission of the crime he personally carried or used a firearm, you should find him guilty of second degree murder or attempted second degree murder with a firearm and then the de definition of firearm. And then if you find Laquan Ramel Barrow committed second degree murder or attempted second degree murder but are not convinced beyond a reasonable doubt that he personally carried or used, I'm gonna delete everything else, carried or used a firearm, then you should find him guilty only of second degree murder or attempted second degree murder. And then the next instruction is on 1020 life. Is on what? 1020 life. I have an, an objection to the, if you don't find that he carried a firearm or used a firearm, you should find him guilty of only a second degree murder. Because I don't know that it relates back up to the aggravation of the felony. It almost sounds like a, if you didn't have a firearm, and you're not convinced beyond a reasonable doubt, you should find him guilty of second degree. It says only, as opposed to second degree murder or attempted second degree murder with a firearm. Where did that language come from? It's the standard. It is combining all of them. It's not, I was trying to avoid having to read it after each count. It's 3.3a. Only of what? Second degree murder or attempted second degree murder. That's what it says. The first paragraph says, find him guilty of second degree murder or attempted second degree murder with a firearm. And I understand. Then, the difference is the word only. Oh, you want the word only out? If you find only. Is the defendant's name? If you find only that Laquan Barrow committed second degree murder. Okay. Do you have an objection to that? No, sir. And 
and then take it out at the end or leave it at the end? A lot of onlys. I only think we need one. <laughs> Read it to me the way you want it to, to be worded. We would ask for both. Okay, all right, just remind me when we get there that I have to make that change. Okay, so it'll read, if you find only that Laquan Ramel Barrow committed second-degree murder or attempted second-degree murder, but you are not convinced beyond a reasonable doubt that he personally carried or used a firearm, then you should find him guilty only of second-degree murder or attempted second-degree murder. That's what you want. All right. That's what it says. Now, 3.3D. And again, the of the, the numerous victims, it is only Nathaniel Kendrick and Danielle Kendrick, which are alleged as discharge and great bodily harm. Those are the only two. So I kind of isolated it made it clear it was as to those two. And then, Mr. Bankowitz, when I get to Mr. King's version of this, then the Danielle Kendrick's name's not in there. And that'll be in the packet the jury gets for him, that'll be very clear. Any objection to 3.3D, the way it's constructed? Ms. Hawthorne? It's fine. All right. And now we're moving to Mr. Smith and Benitria Robinson, second degree murder. Any objection? Nothing. Then attempted second degree murder, Nathaniel Deweese Kendrick, as to Mr. Smith. Okay. Attempted second degree murder uh, regarding Davinus Blunt, as to Mr. Smith. Okay. Attempted second degree murder, as to Danielle Kendrick, as to Mr. Smith because that's now the order they appear. I'm not giving them the information. I just think that would create all kinds of confusion but at any rate. Then attempted second degree murder as to Tomia Wadley, as to Mr. Smith. Well, oh, there is a numbering problem, I see. It's got four, five, and six instead of one, two, and three. Okay, now it has one, two, and three. Let's make sure that didn't happen above. Nope, okay. Then attempted second degree murder as to Dontarius Bartley regarding Mr. Smith. All right, and then you have the same 3.3a aggravation of the felony and you want the only. Right, the extra one. So now it's if you find only that Michael Eugene Smith committed. So it has two onlys. Any objection? 3.3D, the 1020 life. Mr. Smith has no allegation of uh, discharge and great bodily harm in the information. It's discharge only. Yes. Any objection to 3.3D? What page is that? Well, it's 24 now, but I've added a page, so it's probably 23 in what you have. Okay. And then 
murder in the second degree, and I didn't put Miss Robinson's name, so I'm going to add that. And this is as to Mr. King. So I'm adding Miss Robinson's name in parentheses in the title, as I had with the others. Any objection from Mr. King? And then attempted second degree murder, Nathaniel Kendrick, as to Mr. King. Attempted second degree murder, Davinus Blunt, as to Mr. King. Attempted second degree murder, as to Tomia Wadley, as to Mr. King. Attempted second degree murder, as to Dontarius Bartley, regarding Mr. King. And then the aggravation of the felony by carrying a firearm, I'll add the only. If you find only the Gary Edward King, and then the rest of it's the same. Any objection to 3.3a? 3.3d. And again, there was no charge regarding Mr. King of anything past Discharge. There was no discharge causing great bodily harm. Any objection? All right. And then uh, the lesser included instruction. Uh, that is cleaned up on the individual packets. Uh, any objection? And I understand Mr. Bankowitz, Mr. King has asked for no lessers, and I've granted the state's request for lessers. All right, so then we have the lessers, uh, manslaughter as to Benitria Robinson involving Mr. Barrow. Any objection? No, sir. And then attempted manslaughter by act as to Nathaniel Kendrick for Mr. Barrow. Attempted manslaughter by act as to Daniel Kendrick for Mr. Barrow. No objection. Attempted manslaughter by act for Davinus Blunt uh, pertaining to Mr. Barrow. No objection. Tomia Wadley as to Mr. Barrow. No objection. And then finally Dontarius Bartley as to Mr. Barrow. No objection, Mr. Barrow. Uh, and then you get 3.3a again. Obviously, the 1020 life doesn't apply to manslaughter, but the enhancement does. So I'll put only. Only, yes, sir. Okay. All right. So if you find only that Laquan Ramel Barrow committed manslaughter or attempted manslaughter, any objection with that change? Okay. And then. Manslaughter, Benitria Robinson as to Mr. Smith. Attempted manslaughter of Nathaniel Kendrick as to Mr. Smith. Attempted manslaughter regarding Davinus Blunt as to Mr. Smith. Daniel Kendrick for Mr. Smith. Well, probably your 44. My 44 is rules of deliverance. Uh, oh, well, no, your packet only has. See, I'm reading the one I'm going to read to the jury, so the numbers don't correspond. I have Nathaniel Lewis Kendrick, and then my first time goes to Dallas Blue. Right. Nathaniel Kendrick, Davinus Blunt, then Danielle Kendrick. That's where I was. No objection to Nathaniel Kendrick, which is in my packet on page 34. No objection to Davinus Blunt, which is in my packet as page 35. 
and then Danielle Kendrick is next. Yeah, I think what happened is when I was, I'll get it back in there, but when I was sorting through, I lost that count because that count and the information then kind of showed up in a different place when it was amended. I'm assuming the goal would be to have them in the same order, Mr. Barrow, Mr. Smith, or we... It, it, it changed in the information. It, it's kind of a, it got dropped in below so I did it in the order of the information because the, and I did it that way because the verdict forms make reference to the counts so that the counts tracked. So, so that's where it should be. If it's not, I'll get a page. It, it's not. Okay. So if I'm looking confused, that's why. Well, I was confused when I went through it because I lost her. I thought perhaps that it had been dropped on Mr. Smith as well, and then I found it. So that would be where it would go, is after Mr. Blunt and before Tomia Wadley for Mr. Smith. And assuming the language is the same, any objection? No. Okay. And then Tomia Wadley? No. Objection. And then finally Dontarius Bartley? And then the aggravation of the felony by carrying a firearm, I'll add only. Okay, so if you find only that Michael Eugene Smith committed manslaughter or attempted manslaughter. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. And then Mr. King, uh, manslaughter as to Benitria Robinson. No Attempted manslaughter as to Nathaniel Kendrick regarding Mr. King. No Davinus Blunt. No Tomia Wadley. No Dontarius Bartley. No and then aggravation by a firearm. I'll add only. You find only that Gary Edward King committed manslaughter or attempted manslaughter. All right. And then plea of not guilty, reasonable doubt, and burden of proof. Any objection? I think the only deviation from the standard is it uses defendants in plural a couple of places. No objection. on the third clause of the first paragraph. Information. All right, so it'll now read each defendant. The presumption stays with each defendant as to each material allegation in the information through each stage of the trial unless it has been overcome by the evidence to the exclusion of and beyond a reasonable doubt. So I'll add information in there. Any other Is it good now? Yes. All right, weighing the evidence, 3.9. I don't know that paragraph six would be applicable. I don't believe there's any testimony about money received, preferred treatment, or other benefit. That would be for the defense to whether they want it. They want it in, you want it out. I don't think it hurts anything to have it in. Mr. Gorley. Okay. I don't think it. And the only thing that we have in that regards is one of the witnesses was paid fifty four hundred dollars. But the jury never heard it. So. I don't think it hurts to leave it there, but, so I'm going to leave it. Uh, okay, I'm going to delete the defendant in this case has become a witness.
any other objections or concerns about 3.9? In 3.9a, defendant not testifying. You want both paragraphs, I assume? Yes, sir. Yeah. Ms. Hawthorne? Yes, sir. Okay. Any objection to 3.9a? No, sir. And then 3.9c, eyewitness identification. No objection. 3.10, rules for deliberation. Three point one one cautionary instruction. No objection. Then three point one two verdict. And then I'll I'll if you don't have the email version I sent you, I'll print them all and we can go through the verdict forms and then the verdict forms themselves. I just wanted to get through the instructions first. Okay, then next would be 3.12C, multiple counts, multiple defendants. Any objection? Mr. Gourley? And then finally, submitting the case to the jury. My intention as far as the evidence would be uh, not to send any of the CDs or DVDs. Therefore, if they wanted to watch as opposed to looking at the notebook that has the printed copies of the photographs, then they would have to come back into the courtroom to watch. And I, my intention would be to explain that a little more clearly to them. So, And then the other logistical issue is going to be this. Uh, the two jury rooms are off a common hallway. Uh, what I anticipate instructing the jurors is that the evidence will be on a cart in that hallway or displayed on the table that their coffee and things are on now. We'll clear that off. We can put it on the table that if they want to come examine a piece of evidence. They come out of the jury room. They don't talk. They get what it is they want to look at, take it back into their jury room and talk about it in their jury room. And when they're done with it, they bring it back out and put it on the table so the other jurors, the other jury would have access because I'm going to have both of them then kind of pulling from the same pile. Is there going to be anybody there? Yes. The bailiff will be. Okay, so the juror he'll can't he'll be able to watch. To I'm going to make it clear the that they can't the speak to each other. They've abided by my instructions so far, so as far as I know. But I'll tell them no. There can't be any discussion while they're going out to get whatever it is they want, and then certainly not with each other within a particular jury, and not with the other juror. Well, I can ask them that if they come out and that they see that somebody's at the table, they need to go back until they open the door and there isn't anybody there. Now, is this a common hallway where yes. people will be going through? Me. But not while they're out in the hallway. No other judges? Or... I don't know what judge. Scott has planned for tomorrow, but he typically uses 
2D, but I can talk to Judge Scott about that. And will there only be one, the bailiff that has been with the juror so far? Yes, ma'am. Unless he gets hit by a car on the way home. So. And he, he will be out in the hallway? He'll be in a position where he can see. I just, I don't want to put him in a position where he's hearing, uh, unless, I just think that runs too many risks. Well, if they're in the hallway, they shouldn't be speaking anything. Right. So, um, he, he can be in the doorway, so. Is that procedure that you have where somebody's out there waiting until they're gone? Because I just don't want the jury getting into a tug of war with that. Oh, no, no, not at all. Sure, that's understandable. But I'll tell them if they come out and there's somebody there, back up, close the door, wait a minute, and then come back. So, and I'll tell them they shouldn't be having contact with each other. Not if they don't ask to see it. Not if they don't ask to see it. Well, well, they know. They won't know. The wouldn't have any way of knowing. What if that jury is being brought into the courtroom and one of the other jurors decides they want to go see a piece of evidence and they open the door? And They're going to see them coming into the courtroom. They won't know why. For all they know, they may have a verdict. I don't expect the verdicts to come back together. So they know they're, they have their own jobs to do. I don't think the movement of them in and out into the courtroom is going to be of any concern to them. They have their job to do. Because they, they don't have a common mission. They have separate defendants, each jury. So. Yes, all right. If you can verify that, then we can fish up another television. They can each have a television in the jury room, and then the the photographic CDs, DVDs, because they don't need a computer to play them. If they'll play in a DVD, that's all they can do is turn it on or turn it off. There's no access to anything else. The problem has been. Some of those don't play except on a laptop, and I'm not sending a laptop in there. So, But a DVD player, there's no danger of them seeing anything other than what's on the DVD. And if they will all play, you, we can get the two TVs and make sure they all of them play. If they don't all play, then they're, all, they're coming in the courtroom to see them all. I don't want to isolate one that doesn't play in the DVD player. If they won't all play on both televisions, then they'll come back in the courtroom if they want to look at those. And I'll let you satisfy yourselves that they play and that's all they play and you can't get to anything else. So. Okay. All right. So, you know, let's, so there's no objection then the way we plan to deal with the evidence at this point. No, sir. I did notice in the principal's instruction, I went back through. The second line has the word she. It probably should be the word he. I probably changed that this morning. There was several gender issues. It says he had done. The defendant does not have to be present. I think I caught that this morning going through them. Yeah, it says he now. All right, let me print the verdict forms.
Yes, sir. start with Mr. Barrow. I don't know how far you've gotten in them. Okay. Now I made a fairly substantial change to what was submitted initially by Mr. McCourt. choices they had to make that didn't have instructions. I've added what I consider appropriate instructions in italics to direct them. I will spend some time explaining each form to them. For instance, on count one as to Benitria Robinson, uh, there's three places that they can check and they're told to check all that apply and I'm going to tell them that if they don't think they apply that means they didn't believe the state proved those things beyond a reasonable doubt it just seemed cleaner than having a did not prove for each one because it, it just I tried to simplify it as much as I could and I will point out the difference in the instruction between a and B, because B tells them check only one, but it's pretty clear that they're only to check one. And then where I could, where space allowed, I tried to get all of the options on one page. So the only thing we can select is since you underline the word all. One. I can do that. Okay, I did that. That makes sense. And then, and then for count two, because there's the discharge causing great bodily harm, there was no way I could get all three choice A, B, and C on one page. So. But I will underline this is only one, and the other one says one only. How do you want it worded? One only. Yeah, I'm going to make it one only. I was a little cross-eyed by the time I got here. All right, so the word one is now in the middle. It's checked one only and one is underlined. And then count four is the Danielle Kendrick. And I'll make the same change and underline one. Davinus Blunt, one only.
probably would have been easier to change the first one. I've changed the check only one to check one only. One is underlined on all of them. Any objections to the verdict forms? It's on all. I did make the change on all of them. In the last one, because we had talked about reversing one of the only. Ones. Yes, on Dontarius Bartley, yeah. I just went down the line and went ahead and made the change. So you want a complete copy of those? You're good? I'll email them to you. Yeah. Okay. All right, so we'll move to Mr. Smith. I expect I gotta make the same change. Do you want one underlined? Any objection to count one? Gotcha. And then the next verdict form is to count three as to Nathaniel Kendrick. No objection to the changes. Okay, I'll. Yeah. <clears throat> Mr. Barrow. Okay, check one only. I've got that. Count five, Davinus Blunt. Count six, Danielle Kendrick. No, no Count seven, Tomia Wadley. No Count eight, Dontarius Bartley. to Mr. King. Judge, obviously while you've been going over them with the other for defendants we've gone over them, everything looks fine with the proposed changes. Okay. satisfied yourself there's no ver verdict form with regard to Danielle Kendrick so and as I said the juries will be given their own sets Mr. King's jury will just have his charges and lessers Mr. Smith and Mr. Barrow's jury will just have their charges and not Mr. King's changes are made I will email the final version to I have to go into your individual versions and make the changes that we made and then I'll send them all to you all right anything else this afternoon yeah I don't they've got separate transport Okay, we'll ask. I don't have a lot of control over how that works, so but we'll we'll ask. I'm assuming that we're going tomorrow when you order the information. State me. I don't know. If that's up to Mr. McCord how he wants to do it. I, what I anticipated doing, Your Honor, was a single argument, given that both juries have heard all the evidence. I have no with Mr. Bankers' jury hearing the closing arguments of the other two attorneys, nor do I have any issue with Mr. Corley and Ms. Hawthorne's jury hearing Mr. Bankers' closing arguments. So, he'll go, he'll go, he'll go, he'll go, and then he'll have rebuttal. Okay? 
I appreciate that. <laughs> All right, we'll be in recess till tomorrow at 8.30.